welcome and thank you for joining us today. My name is Adam Eady. I'm a Microsoft Solutions Engineer with ITS Partners. And today we're going to be talking about deploying Office 365 Pro Plus with Configuration Manager 2012. So to touch on Office 365 Pro Plus a little bit, um, that is one of the products offered with the Office 365 subscription package. Um, there's numerous different packages out there available for the Office 365 subscription. Um, Pro Plus being the one we're going to focus on today. What Pro Plus is, is actually the full downloadable and installable bits for Office, essentially Office 2013, um, made available through the Office 365 portal. So if you pay for the Pro Plus subscription, you then have the rights to not only access the um, cloud-based hosted content, you also have the right to install the full version of Office 2013, which will work as long as the subscription is active. Um, unlike a normal purchased version of Office that is good and indefinitely until you need to upgrade to the next version, um, this version will expire after your subscription fee is up. And you know, when you renew your subscription, you'll be able to authenticate and access the Office application again. Um, normal deployment mechanisms for Office 365 Pro Plus generally involve the user who wants the version of Office installed to go to the Office 365 portal and select the option to download and install the Office software. Um, but as we all know in an enterprise, having hundreds or thousands of users trying to download 1.3 gigabytes of Office every time they want to use it just isn't a feasible option. Um, so Microsoft has given us the ability to download and those installable bits in a deployable mechanism. Um, so we can use the what's called the Office Deployment Tool, and I'll go into a little detail about that later, to download and install the Office 365 Pro Plus package. Um, numerous different deployment methods and options, um, but again, we're going to focus on deploying this as a user-based application in Configuration Manager 2012. So again, just a little bit more about Office 365 Pro Plus. You can find information on, on it at the link I have posted here. Um, they do have a Mac, a PC, and a Windows tablet version, you know, compatible for Office 365. Um, limited functionality for Pro Plus on some of those other platforms. But Again, it's, it's essentially a full-blown version of Office 2013, including Visio, Outlook, um, Project, Link, you know, all, all of the normal uh, tools we, that we would expect to come with Office. I also want to talk quickly about the Office deployment tool for Click to Run. So this is actually the tool that we need to download those bits and to deploy those bits of Office 365 Pro Plus. If you were to just go to the web portal and download and install the content and try and take the, that download package, it, it's not going to work. You're going to end up with a bunch of CAD files. So without this Office deployment tool, um, you have to do it on that one-off basis. So this is available for free from the Microsoft, uh, Microsoft Downloads website. Um, you, can, you can actually download and install the bits without an active subscription. So if anybody wants to try this out at home, by all means, you should have no problem doing that. Um, once it comes to launching Office and actually accessing Office, that's when you'll be prompted for your account credentials, your Office 365 uh, licensing information. So without uh, any further ado, let's go ahead and get this demonstration started. So the first thing I want to show you here is I have the Office Deployment tool already downloaded. So I'm just going to go ahead and run this tool. It's just a quick little uh, 
executable that's going to extract some information we need. So you can see it created this setup.exe and this configuration.xml file. If we take a look at this configuration.xml file, we're going to see that Microsoft was kind enough to pre-populate some of this information for us. You know what? Um, so if you're familiar with XML, you probably already know that these little arrows here are commenting out these sections. So everything in this XML currently is commented out. So if you just try to run it as is, it's not going to do anything. This XML file is actually used for both downloading and deploying the ProPlus content. Um, the setup.exe that we have here contains some switches that give us the option to download, configure, and package a Office 365 Pro Plus installation. And this package is actually to create an app V package, not a configuration manager package. Um, but they've built in functionality to create an app V package out of the source, which is really nice. But if you notice here, we have the download and configure switch and then the path to the XML file. Um, so those are the two lines we're going to be using today. Back to the XML file. So you see the first line here is source path. This would be the source path that we are going to both download the installation to and run the installation from. Office Client Edition is the architecture, so whether we want the 32 or 64 bit version, we can determine that here. The product ID in this case is Office 365 Pro Plus Retail, contains the language, and then we have another product ID here for Visio Pro. Um, that is considered a separate piece. If we were to take this line out, we would not get Visio. Um, I'm going to go ahead and leave it in for this demonstration. The next line we have is for enabling updates, and then you'd post the path of your update repository. Display level, um, none. This is what the user is going to see during the installation. And since we want to deploy this out of configuration manager, preferably silent install, we're going to want to go ahead and leave this at none. Uh, accepting the EULA and user license agreement, we have that set to true. The log name, by default, this creates a uh, installation log. Very, very helpful, very um, easy to read. Good job, Microsoft, on that one. So we can define the name of the log file as well as the path that the log file gets saved to. And then we have the auto activate property um, set to a value of a one. So I've already configured a <clears throat> functional configuration file. And I will show you that in just a minute. Before I do that, though, I wanted to point out that Microsoft does have out posted out there um, all of the references for that configuration XML file. So everything we need to populate that file is here on this website. Um, so, for example, if we wanted to take a look and find out what that one means, we should be able to go here to auto activate, and we can see. It tells us the properties are 0, 1. If auto activate set to 1, it's going to attempt to automatically activate. Um, activation methods are going to vary depending on what type of subscription you currently have. So we're not going to get into that in too much detail, but we're going to go ahead and leave that value to 1. And you can see there's quite a bit of other, uh, other options and switches we can add into this configuration file, language files. Um, the different versions of Project, Visio, SharePoint Designer are some of the other um, product IDs that we could add into that configuration file. So, Take a look at the configuration file that I have already edited. You'll see in my file, I've actually removed a couple lines. I removed the add source path or the source, source path line. If we take that out completely, um, the setup.exe is going to look in its running directory for both uh, the installation and the deployment. And again, since we're going to be deploying this using Configuration Manager, it's going to be caching 
um, presumably it will be caching to the local device and running from a random directory name. So we don't want to try and pre-populate that. We're just going to go ahead and take that away and let it download and run to the working directory. I essentially left the product information the same. Didn't bother touching that. Um, I did remove the auto update line just for simplicity's sake um, of doing this demonstration. Um, anybody who's deployed Office knows that the update portion generally takes longer than the installation itself, and that's no different in uh, Pro Plus or 2013. I've changed the name of the Office setup.txt to .log. Not a big deal there, but that makes it readable using the CM trace utility. I did leave the path the same, and I left the auto activate value the same. And besides that, it's it's pretty pretty much default. So I'm actually going to go ahead and copy this configuration file that I already have built into this folder here, and we'll go ahead and replace that file. And now we're going to go ahead and run this setup.exe with the download switch and then point to the configuration.xml file. And what this is going to do is this is going to go out to Microsoft and it's going to start downloading those Office bits. Um, this download can take a little while. I'll kick it off, but I already have the bits downloaded. So once I kick this off and let you guys see what it looks like, I'll move to the existing package uh, source that I have already. So we hit enter here. There we go. So tab completion is your friend. Um, so it's going ahead and it's downloading those bits now. And you can see it created this office directory here in the folder that I ran the setup from because I didn't specify a directory in my configuration file. And if we go in here, we'll see that all that it contains is this data directory. Actually, let me move to the existing package that I have. So here, I already have the bits downloaded. Um, you see the, the content is the same here. It contains one data directory, contains two CAD files in that directory, and then three CAD files and two DAT files located inside of the next directory down. And you can see these two DAT files, that's, that seems to be where all the data is stored. Um, that seems to be where our Office installation bits are kept. Um, anybody who's, again, familiar with an, an Office installation, this is definitely not the, the data we're used to seeing when we install Office. No setup, no anything like that. And this is the same data that you would get if you went and pulled this di down directly from the Office 365 portal. And as you can see, there's nothing that we can do with this without the use of this... Uh, Office deployment tool in this configuration.xml file. So in my existing package source, we'll take a peek at this XML just so you can see it's the same one I was showing you. No source path, 64, I did change the architecture to 64 bit for my lab. Left all the default information here, took out the updates, everything else is the same. So nothing special in this XML file. You can see the download still going here. We're starting to get the contents of these DAT files here. So now that we know how to download the Office 365 Pro Plus bits, let's go ahead and look into creating the application in Configuration Manager. So as I mentioned, I've already copied this content over to my package source repository, the location I store my packages for Configuration Manager. So I'm just going to go ahead and copy this URL now because we are going to need that. And let's go ahead and open up our Configuration Manager console. So in the Software Library workspace, under the Applications section, I created a folder here called Productivity. We're going to go ahead and create an application. Now, the way applications work in Configuration Manager, um, they're, they're essentially a replacement for packages. Microsoft wants us to start using applications for as much as we can. Um, it really simplifies the build of the quote unquote package that we're going to be deploying, um, especially if you're using one of these defaulted installation types, um, MSI files, Windows 8 APPX files. Um, you can see that they have some mobile device packaging in there. 
uh, AppV packages. You know, if, you, if you're using one of these, this is literally a four-click wizard to build a functional application. It's, it's, it's very nice. Um, but in this case, since we're running a setup.exe, very similar to the way we had to do it back in the days of packages, we're going to have to kind of trick it. So we're going to go to manually specify the application information here because executable wasn't an option in that dropdown. And we'll just go ahead and give this a name, Office 365 Pro Plus, learn how to spell. All right, there we go. We'll just add the manufacturer there for giggles. All right. And we'll leave the rest of this information default. You can obviously fill all this out if you want. This is just information about the application. Again, some more information about the catalog entry. This is what's going to display in the application catalog. So if you wanted to give it user categories or anything along those lines, I'll go ahead and assign productivity just so we can see how that displays. You can change your app icon if you want. Here is where we're going to go ahead and create the deployment uh, type. So this is the equivalent of the program inside of the package in the old package method. So we'll create a deployment type. And just like that first window I showed you, if we were going to do this through the wizard, it gives us those same options. And you, as we can see in here, executable is not one of them. So this is where we're going to have to trick it. So we're actually going to manually specify the deployment type. And we'll give this the name of deploy office 365 pro plus. Oh, you know what? I forgot x64. That's what I like to add. Um, We'll add in here the current location, so I'll paste that directory in there that I copied out of my source path. And I'll go ahead and leave these checkboxes. And the installation program here, you notice it doesn't let us drop down and choose EXE. So we're actually going to type the switch that we want. So this is actually going to be setup.exe slash, and for this one, you remember if I showed you in the PowerShell, we have the two switches. We have download and we have configure. So this time I'm going to switch over to this configure switch. Switch to the configure switch, I like that. And use that for the installation. So slash configure and then we're going to point to the configuration.xml. Let's make sure I spelled that right. Yep. Yeah. Okay, and as you notice, I didn't add a path to the setup or to the configure or to the location of the configuration XML. And again, the setup is automatically going to assume that is located in the starting directory. Um, if I wanted to define that starting directory, I could do that here, but again, I'm going to leave that default. There is a method of creating an uninstall using the uh, configuration.xml. I'm not going to cover that in this section but it, it is possible and you would just simply um, create a separate configuration.xml so you call it uninstall.xml or something along those lines and then just add that setup string keep that xml file in your package add that setup line here into the uninstall section and then you'll be able to pick install or uninstall in your application deployment options and i'll show you that so this is where things can start to get tricky when you use executables in applications. Um, if, you were, if we were to select an MSI, it would automatically pull this detection type in. And what that is, is um, a way to detect that the application successfully installed on the device. And this is a requirement for an application. And again, by default, if we were to just pull in an MSI, it would automatically configure this clause and use the MSI um, resource ID and verify using that. Um, it would also create the uninstaller using that same uh, MSI ID. But since we're using an executable, we have to define this manually. Now, I have a file already that contains a source path that I would like to use if I can find it. Here we go. So this C program files Microsoft Office 15 client x64 integrated office.exe. This, this gets deployed to 
all of the devices when you install Office. This, this file exists when you install Office um, on every version. So we are going to go ahead, I'm sorry, on every version of Pro Plus. So we're going to go ahead and use this integrated office.exe file as our detection mechanism. So I'm going to go ahead and, and select add clause here. And as you can see, we have file system registry or MSI setting types that we can choose. And then from there, you know, we can add the product codes or the registry keys or the file location path we want to use. We're going to do file. We're going to enter the path here. And then let's go ahead and add the file name here. And this is all we need to do. The file system setting must exist on the target system to indicate presence of this application. So we're going to go ahead and hit OK. And now you can see we have our clause here. Integrated office.exe exists. You could also use custom scripts to deploy the detection, but that's a little advanced for this video. So we're just going to go ahead and use that exe file. And here we're going to configure the installation behavior. We want to install for user, system. We're going to install this specifically for the user because this is a subscription based application subscribed to a user. So we're going to deploy this to the user. And as you can see, we only have the option to deploy when a user is logged in. That's because we're installing it for the user. If we were installing it for the system, we would have the option to change that. Um, but because we're going to deploy this to the application catalog, the user would obviously have to be logged in. So here we can actually define requirements. This is, this is a really nice section added to the applications, um, very similar to the way you can define requirements for a task sequence or specific tasks in a task sequence using WMI or SQL or any of the other methods available to us. Um, we can predefine what requirements need to be met before it moves on. And we can do the same thing with this application. Like if we didn't want to deploy Office to devices that had less than four gig of memory, just by default here, it's on total physical memory, we could say, you know, total physical memory, no less than, oh, I can't, I can't do no less than. Okay, we'll say greater than 4096, so four gig. Um, I'm not going to do that because I'm, I'm deploying to virtual machines at the moment and I want this to work. But um, you can see that we have custom categories, user or device categories. So the user categories are going to give us some few. That, so the only condition here is if it's primary device, true or false. So we can make it so the user can only deploy this software if they're on their primary device. Um, and the device, again, gives us way more options. And then the custom gives us even more. Um, loading, loading, loading. Oh, we'd have to create those on our own. Yeah, so we can, you know, query off operating system versions, Active Directory information, um, all kinds of things that we can queue off of to to deploy this app. We're going to go ahead and leave this default for now. And then dependencies. Um, just like chained applications back in 2007, if an application was required for this to be installed, like maybe Silverlight was required first, um, you could add the Silverlight in here as a dependency. We're not going to add any dependencies to this. And we have our summary, so we can next and close. And we can see that we now have our deployment type created. You can see that it still labels it as an MSI, and that's kind of why I use the term we have to trick it, because it thinks it's an MSI installation, even though it's not. So we'll go ahead and hit next here, and we'll get another summary. I like summary. And now it's going to go ahead and create this application for us. Once the application gets created, just like a normal package, um, we're going to need to deploy that out to our distribution points, and then we're going to need to create a deployment. Um, and for those who may not be familiar with deployments, that is the equivalent of an advertisement in SCCM 2007. So we're going to go ahead and close this.
and let's go ahead and distribute content. Let's start getting this content out to our distribution points before we make the deployment. That way hopefully it'll be done. So we're going to go ahead and select our distribution point and very similar to 07 there. Now it's distributing. If we want to check the content of that uh, distribution, we can go here to distribution status, content status, and we can find the Office 365 Pro Plus. You can see it's zero compliance, but it's targeted to one distribution point. So when this says 100%, it'll be all distributed and ready for us to deploy. So while that's going, We'll go back over here to software library and we'll create a deployment for this. So we'll right click the app application that we created and we're going to select deploy. So again, this is the equivalent of an advertisement. This is what are we going to deploy or advertise this to. So because we want to advertise this to the application catalog, we want to serve this up to users, we're actually going to deploy this to user collections. You can see by default when you deploy an application, user collections are populated. Um, you do have the option to change those to device collections, so you can deploy this to a device where it will show up in the software center. Um, but again, we want to deploy this to users, we want this to show up in the application catalog. Um, a little note on a comment I just made, um, so when you deploy an application to a user to be deployed in the application catalog, that application by default does not show up in the software center until the user installs it from the application catalog. Once the user has installed that application through the app catalog, then it will show up as an installed program, which you can then rerun from your software center. But again, only once that application has been deployed down to that device one time. So I'm just going to go ahead and select all users here. You can see I have a whole three. So I'll go ahead and select the all users collection. And we'll just go ahead and deploy it to that. Now obviously if you were doing this in a production environment, you would want to create your own user based collections um, and deploy to those. And I think that content distribution is slowing things down a little bit. There we go. So we'll go ahead and hit next. Yep, it's definitely slowing things down just a little bit. That's okay. I'll just try and keep talking while we wait for the next button to go. Um, so once this actually deploys out, we are just going to hop over to one of our client devices and get the installation started. Um, like most versions of Office, the install can take quite a bit of time. So you can see here it already detects that it's distributed to one of our distribution points. If I hadn't done that ahead of time, we would have had the ability to do that right here, which is a feature that I like. Here, um, I mentioned earlier, you have the ability to do an uninstall. Here is where we can choose the action install, uninstall. And if we had that uninstall line populated, we could just select the uninstall option here and do an uninstall. We're going to do an install and we're going to make it available. We're not going to make it required. Um, if we were to make it required, it would automatically install for that user. We don't want to do that. We want to give the user the option to go to the app catalog. And um, If we wanted to require approval, Office 365 Pro Plus may be the type of application you want to require approval for. You can check the box here. When the user goes to the application catalog, instead of saying install, it'll say request approval. And the administrator will get a um, a, a notification here in this approval request section here on the left in software library uh, telling them that they have a request and they can go and then approve or deny that request and then the user can go back to the application catalog once that process is completed and then install that application. Uh, we're just going to go ahead and make it available no, no re approval requirements. We'll hit next here. We're going to make this available at 326 p.m. UTC, so that would be about 11.26 p.m. here Eastern Standard Time, a.m., a.m. So we'll go ahead and hit next, and for the sake of, normally we would want as little notifications as possible, um, but for the sake of this demo, we're going to display in Software Center, show all the notifications. This is for um, Config Man and Ops Man alerts, we're not going to do any alerts for this application. 
And then our summary, progress, and close. So now you see here we have our Office 365 Pro Plus application. We have the MSI deployment type created for it. I said MSI while doing the double quote thing with my fingers there. You couldn't see that though. And then we have the deployment. And you can see it's deployed to the all users and it's available. So let's verify that this content has been fully distributed. And as we can see, we have all 100% here. So, yep, there we go. You can see this is just over, or is that just under a gig, 1024? So just over a gigabyte, um, not even 1.3 like the normal office. So a tad bit smaller, but over a gig. Definitely something we don't want our users pulling down from the Internet repeatedly. So you can see under available software here, I do not have Office 365 Pro Plus. As a matter of fact, let's even do this. We'll refresh some policies. So let's refresh the application deployment evaluation cycle policy and then the good old machine policy. And we'll give that a second and we'll see that, again, there is no Office 365 application showing up in the software center. And there we have it. No Office 365. So let's go to the application catalog, which is our user based installation method. And it automatically used my AD credentials, so it knows I'm, well, app admin in this case. <clears throat> and we can see here that we have the Office 365 Pro Plus. Um, here's where that category shows up for productivity. Now these can be organized by category. You see down here, if I select productivity, office is the only one in here. If we had set this to require approval, we would see request approval down here in the bottom right instead of the install button. Um, but we don't have that, so we're just going to go ahead and do the install. So let's kick off this installation. And we'll see here, it's asking us, are we sure we want to install this? Restart may be required. We want to say yes. So at this point, it's preparing the application. It is going and checking installation policies and essentially communicating with the software center. So here we see a nice green checkbox, and most people aren't going to read and think it's done, but it's not. This is telling us our app install started. We've seen down here we get this little pop up balloon downloading and installing software. So if we click on this, it's actually going to open our software center for us, which is already open. And we can now see under, oops, under available software, we can see that Pro Plus is now available. And then under installation status, we can actually see that it's downloading the content now to our CCM cache directory. So we are actually done in the application catalog. So we'll go ahead and close that. We'll take a look at that again once once it's all complete. So you can see it's 80% complete downloading. And once the download completes and the installation process starts, uh, I'm again, I'll go ahead and pause the recording. Nobody wants to watch a line move. And then we'll resume once it's complete. I'll show you the installed office bits and that'll complete our session. The installation completed, and we got a little pop-up notification saying software installation is complete and Office 365 Pro Plus has been installed successfully. So if we hit OK here, we'll now notice that Office 365 Pro Plus is now available to us in the software center. Um, shows up as installed software, and we can now come in here to run it in the future. So once it completes, we'll notice that we have an actual Office 2013 folder. And it contains all of the content of Office 2013. OneNote, SkyDrive, Link, the whole, the whole nine yards. I'm just going to go ahead and launch Word here to show you how the activation process works. Now, the activation process is um, scriptable but that's going to vary based on your subscription status and how you want to automate it. So here, you know, you could enter a product key or type in your email address for your subscription. 
um, and then it'll go ahead and activate Office. I'm just going to cancel out of that and you know, see that uh, it's going to come up and ask to improve Office. You know, I, I never do that. The less data I'm sending out, the better. And then we get our nice let's get started wizard. So it introduces you to SkyDrive, um, lets you set up your background for Office just like in 2013, and then it gives you the option to take a look at some of what's new. Just click through that very quick. We'll open a blank document here and you can see it tells us it hasn't been activated and we have until the 6th to activate it. So it looks like we get five days to play. That's not too shabby. Um, and you can choose to activate here. And this won't go away. There is no close. There's no go away. Leave me alone. This will bother you until you activate it. And that's going to be true for any application. And the last thing I wanted to show you was just the software center and how it looks once an application's already been installed. Um, unfortunately, it's not quite what I would hope for. Um, long story short, in the application catalog, it does not tell us that an application is installed on our device. So as you can see here, it still just shows the option to install. Even if we look at the more details here, it gives us no information about it on our device. So. In my opinion, I guess, that'd be the only downside, but again, we can always, you know, deploy it to the app catalog or again from the uh, software center. So, there we have it. That is deploying Office 365 Pro Plus as an application in Configuration Manager 2012. Thank you very much for joining us and have a wonderful day.